the fires were horrendous so fast so hot and over such a big distance that there hasn't been the amount of animals that I guess in a way you almost hope for after a situation like this because then that way you're looking after them as opposed to there's they're no gone. hope they're gone yeah, yeah. that's right thousand feet you may be wondering what we're actually doing up here me and milkshake why we're heading off back into the bushfire smoke again once more heading to a place called maria today which is on the east coast of australia and it was quite badly impacted by the bushfires that we've been having over the last couple of months here in australia and there's a place near maria called mogo zoo which some of you might have heard about on the news and some of the animals that were affected by the bushfires were actually taken to the zoo to help their rehabilitation, to help them recover. So I'm flying over there to put some of my tourist dollars into the local community to go and meet up with an old friend, someone who I haven't seen for a long time. And um, yeah, hopefully to see some really cool animals. Echo Yankee Zulu, 1252, Echo Yankee Zulu. Melbourne Centre, Echo Yankee Zulu maintaining 9,000. Echo Yankee Zulu, Melbourne Centre. Some people have asked me in the past if I feel self-conscious when people are watching me whilst I'm vlogging. Well, it kind of depends who the people are. Some people just stare and stare and stare. So this is Chad. Hi, Chad. G'day, mate. <laughs> How are you? It's been like 20 years since we saw each other. We did <laughs> a little bit of work down at Featherdale Wildlife Park. Yep. Chad's the director down here at the Mogo Wildlife Park. I built the website for Featherdale like 20, <laughs> like load, ages and ages ago, but he's going to give us a quick look around uh, down here today. What's your role here though, Chad? So I'm the director of both here and Featherdale, and I guess it's just the top zookeeper. So anything <laughs> to do with these amazing animals and the people that look after them is me. What animals have you got down here then? Apart oh, from giraffes. Right. Giraffe, zebra, rhino are in the paddocks behind us. Um, lions and tigers are sort of not far from here. Yeah. But then huge great apes like the gorillas, orangutans, moving then into small carnivores, otters, red pandas. I should mention as well, whilst we're looking around now, you guys are actually closed because of some of the issues with the bushfires of late. By the time this video comes out though, it'll be open again. So I'll put some more details down below, um, but that's why it's just me and Chad kind of hanging out around here. Normally you've got <laughs> more right, people down here. People. Right, now we're going to meet Jabari, also known as Jabba, because this is Australia and everybody has a nickname. This is probably the closest I've ever been to a rhino. Chad's just going to get some food so we can feed him, but I've been told to stand here this side of the fence in the meantime, which I'm very happy with. I know this is probably like every day for you, <laughs> but we are standing right next to a white rhino. We this are. Is, this is pretty incredible. So this is Jabari. This is Jabari. Okay. He's just the most beautiful animal. I just... Jabari's still pretty young, so he still has breeding recommendations, hopefully, in the region. So we do have a small number of rhinos in Australia, so we certainly hope that he would get a breeding recommendation here, but it is very likely that at some point we will have to bring in uh, more ourselves to contribute to the program yeah. in our region. So not necessarily just to stay here at Mogo Wildlife Park, but for everybody. You know, when, we eat, when you start looking at these species, it's never for one one place or another, it's for the species. Now Mogo Zoo is closed when I'm actually recording this footage at the moment and it's been really hard for them because they've been closed over pretty much one of the busiest periods. It's summer here in Australia and January is our school holidays period so to be closed now means it's really tough from an income point of view and it's going to hurt them this year. However, by the time this video comes out they're going to be open again and so what I'd like you to do is check out the link down below have a look at the website have a look at how you can get down here if you can't get down here in one day 
stay overnight. There's some great accommodation in town. Bring your tourist dollars, spend them down here, help support animals like this. This is a, a gorilla, right? This is me being gorilla. like, yeah, 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 yeah. this is me yep. being a tourist That's here a gorilla. in your yep. wildlife park. That's a gorilla. <laughs> but is that not a silverback? So he is a silverback. So yeah. silverback is more the term given to a mature male. And the muscles that you can see down the back there as well. Yep. And you're saying, Chad was telling me before, that's not his final weight. No. So in essence, he's kind of, when he first arrived, I guess he was a lanky teenage boy. <laughs> but he's still probably got about 50 kilos worth of muscle to put on. Jeez. So when he's a man, man, <laughs> yeah. he's going to be just... Come on, little. Come on, you know the drill. So what are they eating, Chad? <laughs> These are mealworms. Meal so uh, a stable part of the diet for most <laughs> insectivorous animals in the zoo community. They love that, don't they? They really sure do. Yeah. Mealworms are the chocolate of the meat. <laughs> Still live simply. Nine nineties on my feet. Who's that? What's that? Who's he? Neighborhood on the scene. Neighborhood on the scene. Tick tock, time is falling. Silence. Do go, mileage. Tick go, mileage. I've got. Is that from the meerkat? I'd say so. <laughs> as well as the day-to-day -day work, you guys obviously have been fairly busy of late with what a lot of people watching this would have seen on the news with the fires that we've had here in Australia. What kind of animals have come through Mogo for you guys to oh, help out with? Everything that was always here. So there are lots of different species of macropods, which are kangaroos, wallabies, uh, possums, uh, reptiles, birds, absolutely everything you can think of. But I guess Part of the troubling thing is that we haven't been inundated. Mm. Um, the fires were horrendous, so fast, so hot, and over such a big distance that um, there hasn't been the amount of animals that I guess, in a way, you almost hope for after a situation like this. Th I mean, this will be something that goes on for a long time. This isn't just a, an event that happened is, is now over. For this habitat to restore, you're talking weeks, months, years. It's amazing work that you do down here. Thank you for showing no, me around nice. and spending your pleasure. time showing me around. When this video comes out, Mogo Wildlife Park back open for business 100%. again. The best way for people to buy tickets if they want to, they can buy them online. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I mean, and we, of course, on, on the day, if you just rock up, but yeah, you're always better to go to the website, check out things you can do, those extra things that you know are available on a day. So yeah, please do. All right, well, I'll put the web address down below for the Mogo Wildlife Park. Do click on it, have a look, bring your families down. Stay overnight in Maruya as well. There's some great accommodation down here. There's some really good bakeries down here as there well, sure which is. I'm going to check out immediately <laughs> after this because it is lunchtime for me. Hey, thanks, Jed. No, my nice pleasure, to see you after to see. this time yeah, as well. That's right.